Welcome to Boating Insights. This is a podcast about achieving your boating dreams, brought to you by Above and Beyond Boating. We deliver the leading courses to skipper your own boat. Hi, I'm Neil from Above and Beyond Boating, and today I am going to be sharing some boating insights with you regarding sea safety and survival training that's available to you. A little bit of background, this is, you know, it's an area of expertise, specialty, and particularly passion for me. Those of you that are not aware, so my kind of original background in working in the industry was actually via salvage work in the UK on a vessel called Hailing Rescue. We used to kind of go out, kind of open boat in a bar scenario, go and basically just go and rescue people. So as I kind of worked my way through the industry, I kind of always have come at it from a direction of seeing um how you know people who are really well prepared and trained it's ne- never guaranteed but they've often been able to get themselves out of some quite tricky situations whereas going the other way with uh, you know very limited experience or training then what should be quite a minor uh, situation can quite easily escalate into something that's either major or um, sadly often uh, catastrophic so off the back of that uh, kind of fast forward about 10 years on from the hailing rescue uh, salvage days and um, it was a logical step that when I started above and beyond boating we also uh, integrated being a sea safety and survival center now historically the Australian sailing, world sailing recognised training that comes with the certificate is a two-day course that has to be updated with a one-day upgrade every five years. And one of the tricky things with that is, uh, well, there's two significant tricky things. Number one is um, for pretty much everyone in life, freeing up two days is not always that easy, but also for the crews that want to train together where some people... um, might only need a revalidation and other people need to do a full course it's not always been easy for tr- for kind of crews to sync up and and train together then we actually were given permission to build an e-learning course um for uh, a significant part of the syllabus for the sea survival so generally the the two-day course used to be a course where you uh, were essentially in the classroom for about a day and a half and, and then you had half a day of what we call the wet drills which is all the kind of uh, the good fun stuff getting in the life raft and wearing your life jacket in the sea and all, all that good stuff with the e-learning what we've been able to do is take that um, time that you would have spent in the classroom and um, still with the same topics but break them down for you into lessons that you can study and digest um, and then uh, you do an exam at the end and then that enables you to come and do your um, or you know enroll and take your your wet drills uh, wherever it kind of suits for you to do it. Now aside from the learning benefits I'll get onto in a minute what's been brilliant to see already is that uh, it's now become really straightforward for crews to organize some training together and and you know they've all wanted to but these days everyone takes their safety extremely seriously and And it's just suddenly made it a lot easier for teams on boats, particularly looking at racing for a minute, where there's a mix of revalidation and full course, and potentially even being able to do the wet drills on an evening and not impact on any weekend time at all. Now that, from a logistics standpoint, is you know one of the reasons it's been so well received. But uh, the really exciting bit for me is, uh, you know, as you know, massive passion for training and safety, um, is that. Yeah, you know, these are quite heavy going topics, some of them, you know, damage control or search and rescue, hypothermia, fire, abandoning ship, man overboard, and, you know, there's plenty more. And, um, and I've often thought no matter how good the training, it can be a, quite an overwhelming experience. I think most people would say that kind of their first sea survival course was quite almost like a rabbit in headlights for for quite a bit of the day so what i've what i've been really enjoying with this is it enables you to kind of take your time look at one topic at a time um maybe still do it all in one day or maybe break it up over a series of evenings or days um and then also which has never always been that easy in a classroom it's enabled us to link out for you 
Uh, and if there's a kind of a relevant learning, be it, you know, a case study or a guidance that's um, that's an opportunity for us to learn and hopefully not have the situations repeated, as well as giving you the training, we've been able to then, you know, link you directly out so that, you know, in a lot of scenarios, you might find that there was something that you've heard about, um, an incident that's occurred, and you've realized that everything you know is anecdotal and you've been told it by people, but you've never had a chance to read the actual you know, accident report yourself. And it's a, it's a really good opportunity to learn. And I mean, I have to say when I first started doing this kind of training, I always used to think those kind of reports were quite heavy going, but actually they are very well written. And it, it's nice if it's what we call interest led learning. It's nice if you do want to go and learn these things that you've got a chance that you can. Um, the other thing that you know, I've been really excited about is, you know, especially things like the man overboard, it's enabled us to just give you a simple action sheet. So, you know, lots of people will finish a a sea survival course, and they'll have a long list of things that they're going to do. And often, not always, but often, nowhere near as many things were implemented as were planned, just because time and money get in the way. And so one of the things we've done is make a simple sheet for you that you can use so that for example, when it comes to the man overboard training and you, you know, as per the audit racing requirements and um, general duty of care to yourselves and people on board, when you're doing the, when you want to do a man overboard drill, we've put some structure into it. So rather than just say, this is how you have to recover a man overboard, we've just given you examples of things that you can use to, to try and do that. So look, I'm, I am excited. I think e-learning is obviously a, a huge step forward to learn in a you know, a detailed and engaging way. And if anyone's got any questions, you know where I am, if I can help with anything. Thanks.